Hey, just wanted to share with you guys the uh, latest eBay score. We've got uh, two VOM volt ohm meters, and both of them are Bell System meters. Uh, as you can see here, this is the uh, Bell System K5-1451-L1, overlook protected. And this one is the CK14510. I said that right, dash L11. Basically, these were uh, regular meters. This is a Simpson, and uh, the one on the left is a triplet that were adapted uh, for use by AT&T and the Bell system in general. Uh, you'll see they have a standardized um, setup on the range switch here. That those two range switches are indeed the same. I guess that would make it much easier for a, a tech to switch between different meters. Um, I'll take these meters apart in a moment. A couple things to note is uh, they are uh, 20,000 ohm, ohm per volt for DC. It looks like 3,000 for AC. Pretty standard stuff. They have these very interesting jacks here. Um, I say interesting, more pain in the butt. Uh, they're kind of a safety jack, and uh, basically it's an inverted banana jack. And, you know, th they work well. Uh, it was a type of safety jack. I don't think they use them anymore. When I got these, uh, or when I got this guy, the uh, Simpson bird, this jack was damaged, um, or at least I think it was. You can see how thin that is compared to... An ordinary, uh, let me grab an ordinary banana here. You can see how thin it is, and thus I couldn't get uh, the cables onto it. So I ended up buying a new one of these at my local electronics slash junk shop, uh, Gateway Electronics, awesome store if you're in St. Louis area, um, and uh, replaced it in here, which I will show you when I take it apart. You can see this one's a little bit different. It sticks out uh, a little bit higher than the original on this side. So here, let me compare these. Let me compare this guy to a Simpson 260. Here. This is a Simpson 260 that I frequently just use uh, to measure things with an analog meter. Works quite well. You can see that the ranges are completely different on the Simpson. 260, uh, this is a Series 3, by the way, versus the Bell System version. Also, uh, uh, the 260 does have the nice um, plus and minus feature as well. I need to lube that. As well as uh, the output jack, which uh, AC couples the AC measurement reading uh, through a capacitor. This one does not, uh, the AC volts does not go through a capacitor. Um, so you can see that they're pretty similar looking meters. They have this kind of classic line um, that Simpson uses. So let's uh, let's take a look inside. Get in here real quick. I'll show you the batteries. Uh, it does have one glass fuse. I think it's actually in series with an HRC fuse inside. I haven't looked closely at the schematic, but it takes. Two of these strange 15 volt batteries on either side here, there and there. I don't actually have any of those, but they're connected by by that guy, that metal bar, and one, uh, I guess it's a D cell, 1.5 volt. I haven't actually uh, put a battery in this one. In that one, it came with a battery, which was of course leaking, um, but the ohm range worked great. I'm going to assume this one's decent. I have plenty of ohm meters, and honestly, a non auto ranging ohm meter is a pain. Um, so I might just not put a uh, battery in here. All right, let's take a look inside. So I've got these both apart. Obviously, the uh, triplet on the left and the Simpson on the right. Uh, I'm not sure if I actually mentioned this is uh, based roughly on the triplet 630. I didn't go into that one uh, as closely, but it's pretty much a triplet 630 with slightly different ranges. I think the ranges on the actual 630 are uh, relatively similar, but maybe, uh, well, they may not be. I had a 
630 that was damaged that I got a garage sale. Um, uh, so I don't have much experience with the actual 630. I do have a 631, I think it is, which includes a uh, Volt, um, a VTVM, kind of a cool meter, but that guy's upstairs. Um, so uh, you can see here, it has a number of uh, trimmers. Uh, don't seem to need to adjust them. All your precision resistors here. You can see it's a single-sided uh, printed circuit board here. I think it almost looks possibly hand-drawn. Probably. All through the whole stuff. There is an HRC fuse. As you can see, that comes uh, right from positive input. So, here's the jack that I ended up replacing. I soldered that on with that big old blob there. Um, but the uh, uh, the pin that I bought was a uh, different size, so I had to cut it off with a Dremel. But uh, it did work nicely. It was a little bit thicker, so I literally had to torque it in there. You can see some scratches as it went in. Uh, I had to torque it in there by twisting the nut, which pulled it in. But seems to work great. Uh, generally, the thing is in pretty good uh, shape. I cleaned the range switch, put a little lube on it. Um, I do see there's a hint of corrosion only on a couple of these contacts. You can see this green green corrosion there. Uh, I put the contact cleaner on there, but I haven't put anything else on there. If anybody has any ideas, see that one that right in the middle of the screen has it too. Um, I don't know if that maybe is from a possible battery leak at some point, but this one sure doesn't look like it leaked. So I don't know about that. Uh, let me know if you think I ought to clean that off specifically, um, you know, if it's doing damage. If it's not doing damage, it does make good contact, and I'm not overly worried about it, but I would like to clean that off. Any uh, suggestions on that, let me know. This guy, the triplet, did indeed have um, some battery leakage when I got him. Uh, just a little coming down, actually, from the D-cell, which was, of course, an alkaline. Um, it did not seem to damage much the uh, the resistors. The other 630 that I had gotten at a garage sale, it was uh, all chewed up. Okay, you can see that resistor looks like it might have a little corrosion on it right there in the center of frame. Uh, I need to go in there with a little uh, little vinegar, neutralize that alkaline. Um, and those guys had some that I cleaned so far just with IPA, but I gotta get in there and get the rest of them. Um, but these are uh, real nice solid meters. Um, I'm happy with them. I always like having a uh, an analog meter. You can see I've got a few of them. Here's my nice big one there, VTVM. Um, they're really nice for uh, judging trends. Uh, and just to have on the bench, just to sit there, you can see that needle move real easily. One interesting thing is that both of these meters, um, per the bell system specs, you know, the manual, are designed to be operated laying flat like this, not vertical like I have this 260. This 260 seems uh, pretty darn accurate to uh, vertical. Uh, obviously, I got it secondhand, um, but um, it's yeah, definitely within spec and pretty well spot on. These also seem pretty accurate when in their horizontal uh, position. So pleased with the purchase. Um, I kind of like this uh, this this bright blue and yellow. Uh, I don't know if anybody else remembers, but those were the Bell System colors. Uh, the blue and yellow uh, were the Bell System colors for a long time before they got broken up. Nice thing. Oops, screws just fell out. They're not captured. Nice thing about both of these meters is they both include the schematics inside the case. So if you need to replace any resistors or anything like that, um, they are in here. Yeah, I'll, I'll get a shot of these if somebody needs them. And leave a comment if you want me to take a high-res photo of these. I may just do that and post it in the comments. But here are the schematics. All right, well, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed these uh, two classic volt ohm meters. Um, they can be had on eBay. Oh, by the way, this, uh, you know, the 260 based one tends to be much more reasonably priced than a regular 260. Uh, granted, it doesn't have a couple of the features like the, the uh, 
negative polarity switch, uh, which is nice to have on an analog meter. But uh, but otherwise, you know, it's a Simpson 260, pretty much. It's a it's a good solid meter. Okay, just a quick addition as to how to deal with these jacks here. Your standard uh, banana jacks are male with a shroud around them, and these don't obviously plug into the male. They're designed to plug into the female holes, like this traditional Simpson 260. Um, although that one won't take the shrouded, you have to use the unshrouded. But what you can get are these little adapters here, and. Um, it's not supposed to be fluttered out there that I got some heat on that particular one, but it still works fine. Um, you can get these female-female adapters on eBay. Uh, four, four millimeter banana plug female-female adapters. Um, they're pretty cheap on eBay. And basically, you can either just put them right on to your... Uh, sorry about that. Put them right on to your leads, and then plug the leads in. So you can see the lead goes right in there, and uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, so uh, other things to note, differences between it and the regular 260, at least the Series 3 here, is uh, this only goes up to 600 volts, whereas the normal, normal 360 goes to 1,000 on this regular jacks, or even on its high voltage jacks, supposedly 5,000. I've actually put 3,500 volts through this guy, and it, uh, it didn't have any problems. Um, wouldn't really recommend that on a regular basis, though. All right, so uh, that's these two meters.